What's up, guys? It's Art, and I am back up with a fantasy booking video for you. The, I believe this is the first one I'm done since the new channel launched. And this is going to be a Survivor Series card, a best of five Survivor Series of WWE versus AEW. You guys were asking me for a long time on the old channel to do this. I figured today is Survivor Series 2021. So, why not do the Survivor Series style fantasy booking and let's have some fun with it, you know? I, fa I put together five matches, best three out of five means that you're the dominant promotion in my book. So, if you enjoy these types of videos, make sure to leave a thumbs up, share it on social media, comment what you would change, who you would have as your Survivor Series teams, and don't forget to subscribe. I want to get this channel back to where it was, and beyond as soon as possible. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and the little bell to get notified whenever I upload new content, which is daily. That being said, let us get right in to the Survivor Series card. The first match of the Survivor Series, WWE versus AEW, is for team on the WWE side, we have the New Day, consisting of WWE Champion Big E, Kofi Kingston, and Xavier Woods, alongside the Street Profits, Angelo Dawkins and Montez Ford. And on AEW side, you've got the Pinnacle. FTR, Sean Spears, Wardlow, and Motormouth himself, MJF. This one is, I would say, a mismatch of styles. You've got the fast-paced, high energy of New Day and Street Profits. And you've got the slow, methodical, almost old-school style of the Pinnacle with FTR and MJF is a slow, methodical wrestler. And Sean Spears, we all know what he's about. So, we get Kofi starting off with MJF. They go back and forth for a little bit. Um, eventually, everybody ends up getting... A little bit of their offense in. As you know. Tags are made. Uh, the first elimination though. Will be Sean Spears. After. A. F beautiful frog splash. By the man himself. Montez Ford. Um, Montez. Will go over. And he'll shake the robe. Like he does. You know. I'm sure you've seen the. Gifts online. But. That will. Cause a distraction. He causes his own distraction. And Wardlow comes in. Cleans his clock. Hits him with an F10. Montez is out. Dawkins comes in to check on his partner. Wardlow's like, ah, ah, fuck that. He knocks his block off. Power bombs him straight to hell. Lifts him up. Hits him with an F10. And just like that, both Street Profits are done. And just like that, it's 4-3 to the pinnacle. Next up would be FTR. Uh, Dax Harwood would end up taking uh, Trouble in Paradise to the that big chrome dome of his. And Kofi would eliminate Dax. Cash will come in, um, 
and eliminate Xavier Woods with help from MJF and the Dynamite Diamond Ring. So that would leave, I believe, Kofi and Big E against Wardlow and MJF, if I'm not mistaken. So it comes down to Big E and Kofi versus MJF and Wardlow. MJF makes a tag. Uh, you can have uh, Cash Cash Wheeler, or you can have Tully Blanchard out there. He can cause the distraction for MJF and Wardlow. MJF has Wardlow hold Kofi Kingston, so he can hit him with the Dynamite Diamond Ring. But Kofi is able to duck. MJF clots Wardlow. Does it knock him out? It pisses off the big man. MJF is he's like, no, 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 big man. That was an accident. No, no, no. But in all that commotion, Big E makes a tag. Uh, double clothesline to both guys. MJF rolls out to the floor. Big E is able to lift Wardlow onto his shoulders and hit him with the big ending. One, two, three. Wardlow is done. And MJF is all by himself against Biggie and Kofi. New Day double team on MJF. They make the quick tags at, that they're known for. Beat the hell out of him. When out comes Sean Spears from the back. He's got a steel chair. He hops up on the apron. He's going nuts. In all the commotion, the chair... Falls into the ring. Wink, wink. And MJF, while the ref is with Sean Spears, MJF clocks Kofi with the chair, tosses away the evidence, and Kofi Kingston is eliminated by MJF, leaving MJF against WWE Champion Big E. This is a big spot for MJF. Going up against the WWE Champion. Big E. Big powerhouse. How does this end? It ends with Big E hitting the big ending. One, two. MJF is just barely able to get his foot on the rope. Bottom rope. To break up the, the pin attempt. Biggie is losing his mind. He's got the ref. He's getting in the referee's face. He's losing his cool. He can't understand what the hell just happened. MJF reaches back in, pulls out the dime, dynamite diamond ring again, and as soon as Biggie turns around, boom! Punch to the jaw. Before the referee even knows what's going on. MJF falls into the cover, and as the referee is counting the fall, he slides the ring back into his trunks, and MJF pins Big E to be the sole survivor, AEW 1, WWE 0. I like this match a lot. This will be... I like all of these matches, but this one in particular... Because it's so nuanced. It's a David versus Goliath story in a lot of ways. But it's also old school versus new school style. Which I love. So that one we get a lot of time. I probably gave that about 30 minutes or so to just go through everything. Second match is I would say the mid-carters. The top mid-carters of each brand. For the WWE side, we have United States Champion Damian Priest, Cesaro, Sheamus, Chad Gable, and Apollo Crews. And on Team AEW, you've got Darby Allen, Christian, Christian Cage, sorry, Jungle Boy, 
Andrade El Idolo, and Malachi Black. Just, wow. So, with this one, we have Chad Gable starting off with Christian. Um, Chad Gable and Christian go out for a few minutes, you know, they do some awesome chain wrestling spots, you know. Think Bret Hart and Owen doing their sequence at WrestleMania 10. Stuff like that. They stay, have a stalemate. Crowd's going nuts. Eventually, we have a little bit more action in the match. First elimination comes when Damian Priest is able to hit the Reckoning, that spinning, like, spinning neck breaker he does on Andrade El Idolo for the first elimination of the match. A uh, bit more action goes on <clears throat> when Darby Allen is able to shotgun drop kick Sheamus into the corner. Sheamus becomes loopy from hitting his head off of the top turnbuckle. He falls. <clears throat> he falls back onto the canvas. Darby goes up. Hits a trio of coffin drops. One, two, three. Darby Allen pins Sheamus. Sheamus is out. Quickly after that, Apollo Crews comes in. Uh, Darby tags in Malachi Black. Uh, those two are going back and forth. Apollo Crews... Uh, distracts the referee, tr allows Commander Aziz, who is at ringside, to attempt to interfere. Malachi Black spits the black mist in his eyes, which distracts Cruz. Cruz goes to check on Aziz. When he turns around, bam! Right into Black Mass, and out goes Apollo Cruz. Uh, Chad Gable comes running in to, you know, get back into the fight. Um, when he runs right into a black mass. And then Jungle Boy is tagged in, or tags himself in. And locks in the snare trap on Chad Gable, who... Is already out from the black mass, so the referee does the you know that thing with the hands raising the arms check. Gable's out, so Jungle Boy gets the submission on Chad Gable, leaving Cesaro and Damian Priest for WWE side, and the only one out on AEW side is Andrade. Now it's where we get interesting. Cesaro and Jungle Boy. Let's go Cesaro and Jungle Boy. Jungle Boy is trying his damnedest to counteract the strength of Cesaro. Jungle Boy goes up, tries a triple jump moonsault. He goes from one rope to the other, tries a moonsault, gets clocked in the face with an with an elbow. Cesaro lifts him up, clocks him with a European uppercut, and picks him right back up into the neutralizer. Bam! Jungle Boy's out. In comes Christian. Damian Priest makes the blind tag. Christian gets eviscerated by Damian Priest. Absolutely taken out with a razor's edge. One, two, three. 
And Christian is eliminated, leaving Darby Allen and Malachi Black versus Damian Priest and Cesaro. Malachi Black is the next one to go. He ends up in a double team with Damian Priest and Cesaro. They pull off a nice, uh, I want to say, powerbomb into a backbreaker combo or a backstabber combo. Uh, and Malachi Black is out, leaving Darby Allen against Damian Priest and Cesaro. Darby is able to eliminate Cesaro after a quick as hell dive through the ropes. Suic Tope Suicida rolls Cesaro back into the ring. Hits him with an insiguri. Hits a pair of coffin drops. Out goes Cesaro, leaving Damian Priest versus Darby Allen. Darby fights his ass off, but in the end, Damian Priest is far too strong and is able to hit a reckoning from out of nowhere and your sole survivor in about 25 minutes is Damien Priest. The work rate in this match alone would be phenomenal. You got 10 amazing mid-card talent that could main event if necessary any show on their specific brands, but to have them have a showcase match like this would be absolutely phenomenal. So, that's how I would do that match. Next match. Third match on the card for Team WWE. We have... <clears throat> we have rated... We have RK Bro. Okay, I, I can get it out, I promise. We've got RK Bro, Randy Orton, and Riddle. We have Seth Rollins. We have Edge. And we have Drew McIntyre. And on the AEW side, we have the new AEW champion, Hangman Page, the Lucha Brothers, F Penta El Zaramiedo, and Ray Phoenix, CM Punk, and Brian Danielson. This will be interesting, to say the very least. Start off with Randy Orton and Daniel Bryan, because why the fuck not? They uh, had an underrated feud in 2013-14, in my opinion. So start them off. These two batter each other. Bryan kicks Orton's chest. In until it looks like hamburger meat. Uh, uh, we get some awesome offense from everybody. Especially the Lucha Brothers will shine in this match. I will say that right now. Um, the first elimination will be to Riddle. He will take a Fear Factor from the Lucha Brothers. Um, and Ray Phoenix will get the pinfall on Riddle. Riddle is the first one eliminated. Uh, in comes Orton. Immediately hits an RKO to Ray Phoenix, who is not ready. He spins him around. Bam! RKO. But Penta he just destroys Orton with a forearm. Orton, loopy, tags out. In comes Drew McIntyre. Drew goes two, one on two with the Lucha Brothers. But they overpower him. The two of them overpower Drew McIntyre. They get him down and then they tag in Hangman Page, who hits a gorgeous buckshot lariat. And with the Lucha Brothers' help, Hangman Page eliminates 
Drew McIntyre. So WWE is already down two nothing in this match. AEW still has a full team. In the match next is Seth Rollins. He goes face to face with CM Punk. Because why not? They had a whole mini Twitter beef a few years ago. Uh, Some good exchanges here. Feels like a real, uh, like, early 2010s Ring of Honor style match. Or like a PWG style match. They're beating the shit out of each other. But in the end, with, of all people's help, Edge... Distracting Punk. Uh, Rollins is able to get Punk down to, you know, in a crawling position. Goes off the ropes. Hits Punk with a curb stomp. And is able to eliminate CM Punk. So it is now 3-4 to four AEW with the advantage. Back in come the Lucha Brothers. And for the time being, Rollins and Edge are coexisting with one another. Despite what happened earlier this year. You know, with Hell in a Cell and all that. They're coexisting for the time being to go up against the Lucha Brothers. Some nice back and forth uh, brawling going on. In the end, it becomes too much for the Lucha Brothers. Uh, Rollins is able to... Excuse me. Rollins is able to hit, finally hit, a Phoenix Splash on Phoenix. And is able to eliminate one half of the AEW Tag Team Champions. Um... In comes Penta, but Edge pushes Seth out of the way of a running attack from Penta and is able to hit Penta with a spear. So Edge pins Penta, which leaves Randy Orton, Seth Rollins, and Edge against Hangman Page and Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan is not going to go out without a fight. But Hangman Page makes the tag. Bryan's looking at him like, "Uh, I see what you did there. So then we get Hangman against Edge. And it's a nice back and forth brawl. But... Brian, being the newly minted heel that he is, based off of this past Wednesday, turns on Hangman and clocks him with a running knee, allowing Seth Rollins to get the pinfall. Uh, Yeah. Allows Rollins to get the pinfall on Hangman Page. Leaving just Daniel Bryan versus Edge, Randy Orton, and Seth Rollins. Bryan is going move for move with Seth Rollins. They're beating the hell out of each other. But Bryan gets the upper hand. Starts hitting the yes kicks to Rollins' chest. Hits him with the insiguri. You know what the fans go... And hits him in the back of the head with the boot. Goes in the corner. And once Rollins gets up, hits the running knee. Rollins is eliminated. But in comes Edge. Excuse me. In comes Edge. Hits Brian with the execution. Uh, I believe the DD, the jumping DDT was the execution. If I'm wrong, I apologize. He hits Brian with his jumping DDT. 
Orton tags in, and he, you know, pounding the mat, waiting for Brian to get up. Hits Brian with the RKO. One, two, three. And your survivors, after 32 minutes, are Randy Orton and Edge for Team WWE. The AEW team show out, especially the Lucha Brothers. But with that much experience and that much superstar power on your team, I had to give it to WWE. I mean, I love both of these teams and everybody on them. But this one goes to Team WWE. So if we're keeping score right, it is... Two to one in terms of the Survivor Series win losses for the shows in favor of WWE. Next up is the women's Survivor Series match. Match four on Team WWE. You have one half of the WWE Women's Tag Team Champions, Rhea Ripley. Asuka, Bailey, Sasha Banks, and Bianca Belair. And for the AEW side, of course, you have Thunder Rosa, Ty Conti, Serena Deeb, Hikaru Shida, and Chris Statlander. You may be asking why... Charlotte, Becky, and Britt Baker are not a part of this. I didn't want to put them in. I wanted to give some other people a, sh a shot. There you go. So, this match, while not as long as the others, does get a decent amount of time. The women will get about 20 minutes to go out and do what they do. Uh, we'll start things off. With Asuka against Thunder Rosa. Because, yes please. Um, you have the Japanese strong style of Asuka against the Lucha Libre style. The MMA style of a Thunder Rosa. And these two women beat the shit out of each other. Uh, eventually... Asuka is still in the ring. Thunder Rosa is able to break free from Asuka's grip. Make a tag to Hikaru Shida. And Shida is able to hit her running knee finish on Asuka. And in a shocker, Hikaru Shida eliminates Asuka 5-4 for the AEW side. In comes Rhea Ripley. So, Akaru Shida tags out to the powerhouse of the team, Chris Statlander. Ripley and Statlander beat the brakes off each other. Elbow for elbow, forearm for forearm. Uh, but, in the end, Rhea Ripley is just too strong for Chris Statlander. He's able to hit Statlander with the Riptide. And out goes Statlander. Sides are even once again. Ripley then goes at it with Ty Conti. They go back and forth a bit. Uh, Ripley is forced to, to tag out to Bianca Belair. Belair and Conti have a short little stare down. Uh, acknowledging that they know one another from their time in NXT. But they don't explicitly say that outright. Uh, but Conti's inexperience compared to Belair is her downfall. As Belair is able to get her up and hit her with the KOD. Ty Conti is out. That is three for AEW, and that is four 
for WWE side. Belair stays in as Serena D makes the tag in to get her first action of the match. But Bailey, the cocky heel that she is, by the way, I miss you, Bailey. I hope you do come back soon. Bailey makes a blind tag. Is going at Bel Air. Get out of the ring. I'm the captain of the team. You know, blah, blah, blah. She's too busy jabber John with Bel Air. Serena Deeb comes in. Schoolboys are one, two, three. And Bailey is out just like that. It's the shocker elimination of the night. Bailey does precisely nothing in the match. And Serena Deeb eliminates her. It's going to piss a lot of people off. But hey, so if anybody's going to make that compelling and entertaining, especially the aftermath when she's pinned, it's going to be a Bailey. So that makes it three. Two, three, we're all square up. In comes Sasha Banks to go up against Serena Deeb. These ladies go out and they work a nice little style. Use some scientific wrestling. Um, Serena Deeb goes for the Serenity Lock. But Sasha is too flexible She's able to break free. Sends Serena D flying through the ropes. Banks does a nice tope suicida through the middle rope. Slides deep back in. Goes up, hits a meteora. And is able to apply the bank statement to force the submission, the tap out, on Serena Deeb. Thus leaving Akaru Shida. And Thunder Rosa for AEW against Rhea Ripley, Sasha Banks, and Bianca Belair for the WWE. Sasha remains in the ring. In comes Sheeta. They go at it. Um, Sasha is able to momentarily stun Akaru Sheeta. Sheeta then is forced down onto the mat after a double knees in the corner. Up goes <clears throat> up goes Sasha, hits a beautiful, beautiful Eddie Guerrero style frog splash. And one, two, three. Sasha Banks pins Akaru Shida, leaving Thunder Rosa against Ripley, Banks, and Bel Air. In comes Rhea Ripley. You've got the size and strength of Ripley against the no nonsense fighting spirit of Thunder Rosa. These two women beat the shit out of each other. But surprisingly, Thunder Rosa is able to hit her Thunder Driver. And eliminate Rhea Ripley. But as she's getting Rhea Ripley out of the ring. In comes Bianca Belair. Lifts her up from behind. Hits the KOD. And after about 20, maybe 20, closer to 25 minutes. Your survivors, Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair. WWE go up. I believe that's three to one for I believe that's three to one for WWE side, if I'm not mistaken. So W they already win the Survivor series. Um but we're not done yet because we have one final match. Survivor, one last 5-on-5 five five Survivor Series match. On Team WWE, we have the Bloodline, the Universal Champion, Roman Reigns, and the 
SmackDown Tag Team Champions, the Usos, teaming up with AJ Styles and Finn Balor versus the Elite. Matt and Nick Jackson, the Young Bucks, Kenny Omega, Adam Cole, and the freshly defected Kevin Steen. Not Kevin Owens, Kevin Steen. This match has so much history in it. You've got the history with Styles and Balor from Bullet Club days. You've got the stuff between Owens and Reigns from earlier this year. You've got the infighting with Cole and Omega. You know, all this. The, oh, my. It's so much story. So, so much story. So, let's get into this one. So, we are going to start off with Finn Balor and Adam Cole. We're going to play off their rivalry in NXT, but we're also going to have a New Japan style ROH style match right here with these two. They are going to beat the hell out of each other with everything in their arsenals. But it's going to be too much for Finn Balor to start off with. Adam Cole is going to tag in the Young Bucks. Or he's going to tag in Matt Jackson and the Young Bucks. Who is going to have his brother come in, help him with the double team. Adam Cole is going to lock on the camel clutch in the center of the ring. They're going to go off the ropes, do the whole kiss on the cheek thing with Adam Cole. And then they're going to double super kick Finn Balor. Who is going to eat the first pinfall of the match. Out goes Finn. 5-4 AEW. Income Styles. And he is going to duck the double super kick because he knows the Bucks just as well as anybody. But he's going to eat a super kick from Adam Cole. He's going to roll out to the floor where Adam Cole is going to go up to the top rope and he's going to be looking out at the floor. He's going to jump down and attempt a Panama Sunrise on the floor. But Styles is able to fight the Panama Sunrise attempt, get him locked in, and hit Adam Cole on the floor with an air raid crash. Both men are struggling, but in the end, Styles is able to get into the ring. Adam Cole is not. He is counted out. So, sides are now even once more. Styles is still in the ring. So, we get the first appearance of the match, uh, in the match of the cleaner. Best bout machine, Kenny Omega. These two never really went at it in Japan. So, this would be one of their first times if not their first time going up against one another in a wrestling ring, that would be awesome. They go back and forth, as you would expect. Um, eventually, Roman tags himself in because he's the arrogant, cocky, heel prick. Styles isn't happy, but he obliges. Roman sets up. Omega, after a series of devastating forearm shots, he sets up Omega, goes for the spear. Omega leapfrogs, is able to hit a V-trigger, sends Roman staggering. He staggers back to his corner, tags out to Jay Uso, who... Eats a V-trigger of his own. Omega tags in. Nick Jackson. In comes Nick and Matt. Which prompts Jimmy Uso to come in. These two teams go at it. Brawling. 
hockey fight, going nuts, when all of a sudden, double super kicks on the Young Bucks by the Usos. Jay Uso pins Matt Jackson. He's gone, leaving his brother Nick, Kenny, and Kevin Steen against the entire WWE side minus Finn Balor. In comes Nick. Jay is able to go for another super kick immediately. Nick ducks, does some fairly interesting acrobatic work before getting back to his corner, tagging in Kevin Steen. Him and Jimmy Uso go at it for quite a bit before Steen hits Jimmy with the pop-up powerbomb. One, two, three. And Jimmy Uso is eliminated. In comes his brother, Jay. He eats not only the pop-up powerbomb, he eats a Stone Cold Stunner, and out goes Jay Uso. That leaves Nick Jackson, Kenny Omega, and Kevin o Kevin Steen against AJ Styles and Roman Reigns. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. And yes, I am going to do this. AJ Styles is in the ring, across the ring from Kevin Steen. Roman's on the apron. You think, okay, Styles and Steen, sounds like a hell of a fight. When, an act when all of a sudden, AJ Styles completely wears the face off of Roman Reigns with a series of forearm shots. I kid you not, he clocks him like he was knocking fucking Okada's chin off. He clocks Roman. AJ Styles has turned on the WWE, sided with AEW, hits a Styles clash on Roman Reigns. Roman is down. As AJ Styles walks off, he is the legal man, mind you. He walks out of the ring, stands there as the referee counts him out. Roman is left as his only partner turns on him, leaving Roman Reigns versus Nick Jackson, Kevin Steen, and Kenny By God Omega. Roman makes his to his knees. He's surveying the situation. When Nick Jackson, like the tough guy that he and his brother claim to be, goes charging at Roman Reigns. Big mistake. Big massive mistake. Roman is able to pull off a Superman punch. Nick staggers back to his feet. Roman hits a second Superman punch. It makes Nick's knees go weak. He falls to the mat. One, two, three. And Roman eliminates one third of his opposition. Leaving Kevin Steen and Kenny Omega. Then Reigns goes face to face with Kevin Steen. The history these two had earlier this year in WWE. They had some amazing matches. But this is a different Kevin Steen. This is not Kevin Owens. This is Kevin effing Steen. Kill Steen, kill. He beats the brakes off of Roman Reigns. But Roman does not go quietly he does not just fall into a whimper. 
Roman is able to fight back against Kevin Steen. He's able to withstand a pop-up powerbomb. He's able to withstand a, a barrage of super kicks. And he is able... <clears throat> he's able to get Steen down on the mat long enough to lock in the guillotine choke. Same move that put Kevin Owens out at the Royal Rumble is now going to put out Kevin Steen at the Survivor Series. Kevin Steen passes out. Doesn't tap. Passes out to Roman Reigns' guillotine choke. That leaves Roman Reigns versus Kenny Omega. One versus one. And these two have an epic, almost mini singles match. They go at 10 minutes one on one. Roman is pulling out every power move he can think of. He's pulling he's pulling out the one arm power bomb where he lifts him up by one arm and power bombs him. And he's pulling everything out. Omega's pulling out V triggers. He's pulling out uh, dragon suplexes, snap dragon suplexes. He's pulling up. Both men are pulling out everything they've got in their arsenal. When out of nowhere, out comes AJ Styles. He comes back out. And he hops up on the apron. And he starts wagging his finger at Roman Reigns. Reigns, obviously not going to take that shit. Runs at Styles. Hits him with a Superman punch. Styles goes ass over tea kettle. Falls to the floor. Does a front flip. Every Styles is great. You know he can pull it off. This slight distraction. Gives Kenny Omega. The time needed. To get in position. And hit Roman Reigns in the back of the skull. With a running V trigger. Reigns is staggered. He lifts Roman Reigns up for the one-winged angel. Roman is able to slip out of the one-winged angel attempt. He's quick to get off the ropes. Hits Kenny Omega with a spear. And one, two, kick out! Omega kicks out. Of Roman's spear. Roman can't believe it. Neither can anybody else. By God he goes for it. He goes for the Superman punch. As Omega. Gets back to his feet. But as. Reigns goes up. For the jump on the Superman punch. As he comes down. Omega hits him with a V trigger. Reigns. Goes limp. But somehow Omega is able to get him back up into position. Hits Roman Reigns with the one-winged angel. And the sole survivor of the main event for my Survivor Series is Kenny, by God, Omega. After 45 fucking minutes. Yes, yes, fucking yes. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care if people get butt hurt. This is my card. This is my choice. And by God, Kenny Omega is going over here. Because God damn it, the AEW has to win some point. But... As we've established, WWE just slightly beats out AEW. Just slightly, though. Three matches to two. But it could have gone either way. Just the way I booked it, it just happened to go to the WWE side. But, like I said, guys, 
it's all just fantasy booking. It's all just what you want to see in terms of your fantasies in terms of wrestling booking. But let me know down below what you guys would do. How, who would you have in the matches on either side? Who would you have go over? Who would survive in each match? Let me know all of that in the comments section below. Do not forget to like, share, subscribe, turn on a little bell, get notified whenever I upload a new video. You guys know the drill. I don't got to say it no more. That being said, my name is Art. And until next time, I'm out. Peace.